Here's my top five acceleration drills for athletes to be able to develop speed. Let's get into it. The two things that I really look for when developing acceleration in team sport athletes, and obviously if you're a track athlete, this can be a little bit different. However, what I'm referring to is when I develop athletes in the off season, what are the main key principles I'm looking for? Number one is I'm looking for trajectory, right? And this is gonna all be the torso position and the actual shin position. Is the athlete attacking back down at the ground? And number two is that athlete getting an optimal push through hip extension. And really when I mean push, it doesn't mean they have to go through full hip extension. It just means they're not padding towards the ground, right? And they're really focused on actually pushing because in acceleration, you actually spend a little bit more time on the ground than obviously top speed. So with those two principles in mind, let's get into the five drills. So first and foremost, firing off, we're gonna get right into the half kneeling start. So half kneeling start, the athlete is gonna be down on the ground. Two things I'm looking for. I'm looking for the toe to line up with the knee and I'm looking for this first shin, right? You're gonna be on the back toe here, but I'm looking for your shin to be in the angle we wanna go in. From here, this knee is up, so this hand is gonna be at the cheek. The other one is gonna be at your butt cheek, right? Or in your holster, if you will. Now, I'm gonna have the athlete tuck the chin. I want eyes drawn back down to the ground. Now, from this deep angle, right, between our knee, our ankle, and our hip, I want that athlete to really focus on pushing off as hard as they can and being able to push into that trajectory like they're diving in a pool. So this is one of those drills where yes, it works that trajectory, but number two, it really works that push that I was referring to. So we're really trying to elevate that. So I do work it through both legs, right? And from this static position down here, can that athlete drive out of that leg and accelerate properly? So the athletes can be here, boom, and being able to push out into their sprint. The next one is gonna be a two part and I'm gonna share with you exactly how I like to do each one. But it's gonna revolve all around the alternating bound, right? And the second part to that is, which is my really favorite drill of this, which is a bound to sprint. Now when you're performing alternating bound, there's two variations I typically like to do. One where you're focused on projecting yourself horizontally for distance, and one where you can alternate bound for vertical, right? Where the torso's more upright. Well, obviously for acceleration, the one where we're focused on pushing for distance is the one that's gonna really elevate the athlete's acceleration. So when performing alternating bounds, I wanna have my rib cage slightly over my pelvis. I wanna have my chin tucked, my eyes gaze at the floor. Now from this position, I wanna focus on punching my knee forward and attacking back down to ground. And so the reason why I absolutely love this drill, again, it's not one that necessarily is to teach mechanics. However, what it does teach is that athlete to continue to push through extension. And what I mean by that is striking the ground and pushing through extension. So whether it be an alternating bound or a bound to sprint, both of them are gonna highly support an athlete in performing and accelerating overall. So you see right here. All right, coming in at number three on the list is going to be a band piston sprint. So the first two we focused on was all about that trajectory and that push pushing forward, right? Being able to tack back down to ground and project yourself horizontally. This next one, we're actually gonna focus more on the sequencing of the switch when you go to produce that force and also elevating right, the hip flexors. So this is gonna be a band piston sprint. And the reason why I love this is because all essentially the band is doing is allowing the athlete to slightly lean into the actual band as opposed to doing piston runs or a high knee run with the torso upright. Now the athlete can get the feel of attacking back down the ground. So my cues here and what the athlete is gonna do is gonna rapidly pop the thigh using the hips right? And be able to strike back down at the ground in a piston-like action. So the athlete is not cycling. The athlete is being able to lift and pop straight down at the ground. A couple key things I'm looking for. Just like the alternating bound, I want the rib cage over the pelvis, right? Or projected forward. Eyes, chin tuck, eyes slightly down. The athlete is going to remain in dorsiflexion, striking the ball of the foot. And what I usually like to cue is lift with the hip and attack the ground, but don't beat it up. So imagine you're trying to focus on being attacked down with speed, but you're not punching the ground. And what this does is it allows the athlete to focus 
on rapidly switching and rapidly lifting with the hips. So Ian, we're gonna go about five yards. We're gonna go rapid, swift motion, really raise it up, let's go. Beautiful. And obviously Ian's one of the fastest guys there is, so good work. All right, coming in at number four is going to be some kind of heavier, moderate to heavy resistance sprint, right? And we're only going about anywhere from five to maybe up to 20 yards. And the reason why I love the resistance sprint is simply because it puts the athlete in the exact trajectory that we're wanting, right? So the torso is moving in that positive direction and the shins are also attacking back down at the ground. And so we can kind of really set the athlete up to be able to elevate and overall enhance their ability to push away from the ground, depending on the actual load that we're using. Essentially what we're looking for is the athlete to start off, chin tuck, eyes down, and then essentially being able to explode out, obviously using resistance. Now, we're fortunate enough to have these run rockets, great machine here because they keep like a constant tension. You don't necessarily need to have that. You can get creative, you can use sleds, play with the loads, things of that nature. Um, when I was a kid, we used to tie uh, actual rope around us and pull a tire, right, at, at, after our football practice. So you could get as creative as you need to. I do think that resistance sprints, especially pulling them as opposed to pushing them, I'm not saying sled marches and things of that nature aren't great. It's a little bit more of a resistance motion, right? Whereas this is a more pure acceleration drill. And again, it's all the things that I'm looking for. That positive trajectory while also tacking back down the ground and pushing. So it overall enhances the athlete's ability to accelerate. So it's gonna get lined up in a two point start. As always, I just want them in good habits, being able to create good habits with their hand motion, their angles already coming out of it. And then it's just simply an effort drill where it's a matter of going to work. Last but not least for number five is gonna be our basic bread and butter two point starts. Now, the reason why I had to choose one of these, and I know these aren't one of these shiny object drills, right, or something fancy. Um, the reason being is because every time that you train acceleration, you need to reintegrate it back into your actual running, right? So by simply setting yourself up in a two point stance, getting into that position and then projecting yourself and being able to drive away for those first five to 10 yards is paramount to every single session when you perform acceleration. Same thing with top speed. If you train all these drills and do all these things, you have to follow that with being able to sprint at the end of every session because you gotta reintegrate those drills into what you're doing for that motor pattern to eventually take over. Anything performed at a high velocity, you have to drill, 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 drill at a high level, and then you need to reintegrate it back into your actual sprint. So that's why I needed to make this number five. So a basic two point that I'm looking for is the athlete getting into a staggered stance. Now, depending on the athlete, you can alternate. I usually typically like to start off with the athlete deciding what their power leg is or their drive leg. I usually tell athletes, what hand are you? Or what would you dunk a basketball off of? The leg that you jump with. So if you're right, it's gonna be predominantly your left. And if you're lefty, it's gonna be predominantly your right. I've had some athletes that's unique to them. And again, depending on the athlete, we might switch around because they might need to be able to get off out of each one of those. Big things I'm looking for is I don't want a deep split. I want the actually athlete to be pretty stacked right here. And then all I'm looking for from the lower body out is for them to get the hips slightly up, chin tucked, get their shoulders down. These shins, I need them moving and pushing into that position. So I wanna set them up in that exact position. The other thing with the arms, just like before, I wanna have them already in the position. I don't wanna have them here. This isn't a sport specific start, right? So I wanna have them already set up the way that they're going to project themselves out. So they can focus on that leg action and being able to project out. So it's gonna get into a two point start, boom. And then be able to push off and sprint and be able to work those drills that we just worked. Real quick, you know I gotta follow up with a bonus for you guys because this is a drill that I absolutely love, especially when training that bottom up trajectory when working acceleration, it's gonna be the crouching start. I actually used to love the ground start where the athlete is in a push up position, being able to pop up. It's not to say I still don't love this with my youth athletes. However, when I'm specifically training angles, right? Torso position, shin angles attacking back down the ground. 
I love a crouching start. And if you have a little bit faster athlete, an extended crouching start. So crouching start is just gonna be what you see when an athlete, like a track athlete coming off the blocks. So they're actually in that four point, right? And they're coming up, raising their hips. Now, if you just look from this bottom up with my, both my hands down, take a look at how aggressive my shins and my torso angle is in projecting myself this way. So I'm already in that deep position. Now, if I extend my hands out, I've already made this a lot more aggressive. So I've had to split my load onto my front hands. Now, the thing about a crouching start is yes, it can teach trajectory, but the other aspect of it is that when you extend an athlete, what happens is you're almost taking them right to the verge out of their rhythm and timing. And so what happens is, is they have to rapidly switch to get out of that trajectory, out of that position. So you're overall enhancing their ability to pop their thigh or their knee forward, being able to train and overall enhance that. So none of these are mechanical drills. Again, when it comes to acceleration, if I can focus on trajectory and getting a good push away from the ground, I know that I'm going to be able to get proper mechanics the more that I'm able to get those athletes to perform those two principles. So I hope that helps out. There's six for you guys, right? And those are my top five in no particular order. I just wanna share with you the most effective drills that I find for developing team sport athletes. Now, one thing I will say, obviously there's carryover with a lot of track athletes. However, when it comes to track, especially like 100 meter or 60, it's very sport specific, coming out of blocks, coming out of those things where there's a lot of principles that carry over, right? A lot of these things that we teach, I'm trying to teach to be able to get basic fundamental principles and get them faster, whether that be a football player coming out of their breaks or a baseball athlete trying to steal more bases. Those are things from acceleration standpoint that I'm looking to be able to elevate. So that's why I really love these particular drills to elevate that athlete. Hope that helps, I'll you guys next time.